diagrams, so the loading diagram, and we're given what the cross section looks like. We want the shear stress specifically at B, the web of the T beam. To find the transverse shear stress, we need V, we need Q, we need I, and we need B. So in this one, where can we start to find the four things that we, we require to find the stress at B? Because it's cantilevered, the easiest thing to do here is going to be making a cut and taking everything to the right. And I don't need to find those wall reactions. At that cut, there'll be a V and an M. In this example, we don't care about the M. If we sum the forces, this one's pretty easy. We're going to get that V has to be 6 kilonewtons. And we can find M, but we don't need it in this one. Yeah. I'm cutting it at section AA. Because that's where, in section AA, we then look at it. If we look at it this way, we're then looking at that section, at that point B, what the stress is there, what the uh, shear stress is there. So yeah, we don't need the full VM diagram because we only care in this example as specific cut and as specific uh, Z location or Y location what the stress is. So here at this section, we know V is 6 kilonewtons. So that's one thing done from the VQ over IB. For the whole cross-section, we can find the value of I. It's a relatively simple cross-section, but it is going to be made of two rectangles here. Shape number one is 20 millimeters by 70 millimeters. So 1,400 millimeters cubed is its area. And shape two is 20 by 50, 1,000 square millimeters. For a total of 2,400 square millimeters. I put my coordinate system at the bottom here. So in shape number one, its value of y tilde will be 20 plus 35 is 55 millimeters above the origin. And shape two will be 10 millimeters above the origin. And multiplying them together, I get 77,000 for shape 1 for the AY tilde, 10,000 for shape 2 for the total of 87,000. And I can use that then to find Y bar, because I need to know where the neutral axis is. Will be 87,000 over 2,400, which will be 36.3 millimeters. Moment of inertia of shape one and shape two. Shape number one is 57.2 times 10 to the third. This is in millimeters to the fourth power. Shape number two is 3,333. And their sum is about 60.5 times 10 to the third. Y tilde minus Y bar for shape number one, uh, 18.75. Uh, this was rounded. And negative 26.25 for shape number two. So finally, we can apply that parallel axis adjustment. So for shape number one, about uh, 492,000. This is in millimeters to the fourth also. And shape number two, 689,000. So a total 1.18 million for the adjusted, for the parallel axis part here. We add our IX prime, which was uh, 60.5 thousand to the 1.18 million, 
and we're going to get 1.78 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th power. But as we saw with the uh, bending problems, we want everything in our standard unit. So we're going to put this into meters, which will be 1.7, uh, seven, six, yeah, times 10 to the negative sixth meters to the fourth power. So the table, just like we did the other day, we need that value for i. Right? We have the value for i. We have the value for v. Now, together, we can find the value for q and for the value of b. So b is going to be evaluated on the web of the, of the structure. So the web is the thin part. So we're going to make the cut right above where it flares out here. So we will be working with that smaller uh, cut area there. We're not going just below where the value of b would be much larger. So for our mini shape, I'm going to make a cut right above, or yeah, right above where it flanges out. So I could use everything above, or I could use everything below. For convenience, I'm going to take everything above that point. Now here, we see that the neutral axis passes through the set, the, the in between it, it's not at the bottom like we saw in the previous example. So as a frame of reference down here, we only know that the neutral axis is 36.3 millimeters from the bottom of the shape, which is not included in the mini shape. And then we need to find where the centroid of this shape is, because we also know that that distance will be 20. So to find Q for our mini shape, we need to find the mini shape's area. For the mini shape, it's 70 by 20. And we need to find Y uh, bar for the mini shape. So that's going to be from the mini shape centroid to the neutral axis. That distance is Y bar. So to find y bar, we know that it's, the, it's 35 from the bottom of the shape. It's 20 from the bottom of the shape to the base here. So this distance we can find by taking the 35 plus the 20 minus the 36.3. So it's going to be 55 from the bottom minus the 36.3 from the bottom. And that's our y bar. Again, this distance in here. So calculating that all out, we get our value of q here, 26.3 times 10 to the negative third. I'm sorry, negative sixth. 26.3 times 10 to the negative six meters cubed. And then finally, B, the amount of material we actually cut through, we only actually cut through, in, through the web 20 millimeters worth of material. So from the mini shape, that's how we got the Q, that's how we got the B, we got I from the whole cross-section shape, V in this case we got from a free body diagram, but potentially it could be from a VM diagram. So now we can finally put it all together. The value for V was 6,000. Our value for Q, uh, 26.3 times 10 to the negative 6. 1.78 times 10 to the negative 6 for I. 20 times 10 to the negative 3rd for B. 
So overall, the shear stress at that cut section in the x direction, at that plane in the y direction, we get 4.4 megapascals.